Good evening. Oh my, it is it is it has been a while. It's been actually a little bit less than about 24 hours since we had a stream here from the Paradox Tower, and it's time for something interesting. Yesterday we had uh, EU4, but uh, today we have something completely interesting, and it's uh, it's in front of you right now, and it is none other than the Rajas of India. Welcome. Oh, yeah. How are things uh, how are things going, guys? I have somebody new with me. We've never had him on stream before. We may have seen him in the bar every once in a while. Introduce yourself, please. Hi, I'm uh, Tobias Bodlund. Uh, I work in the to Rajas of India and uh, also Sons of Abraham expansion for that. Sons of Abraham as well. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So you've been you've been at the company for a few months now, and this is your your second big project you're working on. Yeah. Um, looking back at some of the other projects we've been doing, like uh, Old Gods and all that, this are you kind of looking back and saying, "Wow, I wish I could do one of those," but then you look forward, like I'm gonna add a whole new continent to the game. Well, yeah, ex exactly like that, more or less. Yeah. I mean, uh, obviously, I would have <laughs> loved to have been there. Uh, during Old Gods, because you could tell the guys had a lot of fun making that expansion as well. Mm -hmm. But uh, I think with uh, India, we've had a really uh, ambitious uh, scope, and um, it's been uh, it's been a uh, lot of fun working on it. Mm -hmm. yeah. So yeah, and and you've done a significant amount of research as well, I believe, on these games. Because oh yeah. you're kind of our in-house historian <laughs> slash script guy. I don't know what, what is your official title with us. Uh, scripter and historical researcher is my official title, mm -hmm. <laughs> and uh, yeah, I'm really in charge of doing loads and loads of research. And uh, well, history being a profession and a hobby <laughs> for me, but you know, medieval India was something that was uh, not my first area of expertise before we started on this expansion. So that's uh, one of the most fun parts of, of uh, any new project here is, the, you know, you get to delve deeper into that part of history and uh, and then uh, make a game of it. Mm -hmm. and, uh, yeah. uh, looking looking at this particular thing right now, we're currently in the multiplayer. It's it's brand new added to, well, not so much brand new. We, we kind of overhauled the multiplayer system uh, with this update, moving everything over to Steam rather than our own solution. And we're currently uh, currently in a multiplayer game ourselves. Uh, we're currently looking over the subcontinent of India in all of its glory. Oh, that is the wrong, oh, that is the right button, my apologies. And uh, we are going to be playing as two Indian, uh, uh, Indian Rajas. Uh, I believe I will be playing as um, Maharaja Omagashvarasa of the Rashakutra kingdom. And you are going to be playing as Maharaja Boja of the Pratihara Kingdom, and also the Pratihara Dynasty, of course. Of the Pratihara Dynasty. Yeah. Um, how many how many uh, problems have you guys had with actually properly pronouncing the names of some of these people? Uh, well, you know, <laughs> it's been an interesting challenge mm -hmm. with some of the longer names, but <laughs> no, uh, I mean, uh, that's one of the great things as well with working on this expansion is uh, I mean it's a new continent and it's a very different part of the world uh, which uh, historically and culturally has been very different from Europe where we normally move and uh, well all these interesting names interesting gods interesting mm -hmm. tra mm -hmm. uh, traditions and mm -hmm. so on uh, it's um, you know uh, making that come alive and uh, while also integrating into the existing crusader kings and mm -hmm. making everything work is uh, it's uh, you know a challenge uh, yeah and exactly so uh, of fun as well let's uh, let's for us let's dive into <coughs> the game and uh, see if we can uh, make something out of this because basically what we're going to be doing is we're going to just walk things through a little bit uh, uh, basically what we've been doing in the last last day or so since it's been coming out and also play a little bit around with the actual expansion to see what is possible you will be playing as a hindu ruler yep and i will be playing as a giant i'm going to try to turn into a hindu as soon as i possibly can because i want to get into that rating so yeah. uh, let's uh, <laughs> let's take it away here from your screen here first uh, to be us and see what you uh, can do so let's get this party underway we're going to be uh, doing this at speed three and we're now nicely underway so uh, let's uh, get this party started here what are you what are you going to be up to obviously you start off do you start off married yes you do yeah lucky you 
Okay. I have, oh, and I also uh, start off by having war declared on me. Oh, that's, that's good. Yeah, all right. So this I will can be interesting. I can, I can try to... M do you have any daughters? I can marry into your family and help you out if you'd like to. Uh, all right. Well, that's... Uh, well, I have a son here who's already married. Okay. Um, I can murder his wife. And <laughs> <laughs> no, no. Uh, well, I, uh, the, the, the problem is I have, I have a son. I just don't have a... I just don't have a wife. I don't have any. I don't have a wife for him yet, and I'm not actually married myself. Uh, no. So yeah. do you don't have any daughters. Do you have any sisters? No. I need to start producing more family. More, more though, children. Yeah. Though neither me nor my wife are exactly in the, you know, child rearing age. So. Mm -hmm. uh, let's see. What kind of a person am I? Midas touched Kshatriya. This is one of the caste traits, uh -huh. which um, is very important, especially for Hindus. Mm -hmm. So, how many caste traits do you have? You guys actually added? Uh, well, there are uh, three, and uh, there were uh, more castes in India and, and subcastes and so on, obviously. But uh, for gameplay, what uh, has been interesting is the Kshatriya caste, which is the caste of warriors and kings, basically. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. The Brahmin caste, which is the caste of priests, uh -huh. which is the highest caste in the hierarchy. Interestingly, although you'd think that the kings would be the highest, but yeah, um, it's it, they. It's, um, when I was uh, back in school, way, way, way long ago, we yeah. always uh, had the discussion of uh, we actually had. Maybe I should raise my armies. Yeah, that'd be a good <laughs> idea. We had we actually had religious. Um, a uh, religious class at one point. They actually were talking about that. Oh, I can see all your armies moving around. It is such yeah. excitement. Let's see if we can see some elephants here. Here we have some Indian uh, heavy infantry. Mm -hmm. And uh, let's see. Right, maybe I don't have uh, enough. What do you have? Yeah, no, I don't have any elephants yet. All right, I'll have to. You need to. You need to get the elephant retinue in yeah. order to get those. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Actually, if we could look over, I can. I can't raise any war elephants because my retinue is too small. Mainly because my technology is way too low. So I'm gonna. Yeah. We need to going to need to spend points in military organization to actually get to that point. Yeah. So who did you? Who did declare war on you? Was it the Safrids or was it the Habari or who was it? Uh, sorry, I was reading my uh, text. Sorry, mm -hmm. <laughs> could you repeat the question? Who was who was actually uh, who was actually going to war with you? Yeah, it's my annoying neighbor, the Habari, the, the Paul Empire, the Paul, yeah. the Buddhists are attacking you. Yeah, really? Yeah, interesting. Do I have any claims on? I that? wonder if Buddha would have approved of that. Nah, I don't think so. Well, you know what to say about Christ and the Crusades as well. So, okay, <laughs> right. The passion between me and oh my god, we have a bet chamber event. Oh, oh, okay. So, so here we go. All right. So here's right. Uh, here's a narration of that. Um, while you go to the war, the passion between and Kapmavari was was still there, only slumbering beneath between our, uh, under under our skin, easily woken to life with lover's touch. It was hot. It was fierce. Wonderful lovemaking, such as we used to have. She showed me who was boss in the bedchamber. Awesome. That's <laughs> great news. I got five prestige. Well, so I don't know about this. <laughs> I get attacked by my huge Buddhist empire neighbor, and uh, you get to have fun in the bedchamber. Uh, yeah, exactly. I get to have a good tumble. So yeah. speaking of a good tumble, there were some people were reporting some problems of men having children, as in becoming becoming pregnant. Can you... Can you explain a little bit why this happened? How that happened? Yes. Well, I couldn't explain the biology of it, <laughs> but uh, so when, a yeah, well when, a, when two people love <laughs> each other very, very much, <laughs> then Daddy gets pregnant. Yes. <laughs> no. What really happened was that uh, it's one of the changes we made in this patch that uh, we have these um, events where, uh, as uh, the king, you could um, well hit on one of your courtiers. Mm -hmm. And that event uh, used to uh, only per permit uh, heterosexual relations. Oh, yeah. I'm dead. But that was quick. But now uh, you might have a homosexual character, obviously. And uh, so anyway, there was a change to that event, <laughs> <laughs> and uh, uh, somehow um, it uh, the scripting logic made uh, it possible for 
temporarily for a man to become pregnant, but we'll fix that now. <laughs> <laughs> this this is almost as good as the time that uh, this is almost as good as the time that grew gave, every, gave everybody in the Byzantine Empire syphilis. Oh yeah, that was hilarious. <laughs> <laughs> is, can you tell the story behind that? Yeah, that was uh, that was a patch that came out in August and uh, and. Uh, there was uh, a new trait added in that patch, can't remember which. But uh, anyway, the way, uh, <laughs> the, way the game uh, reads the trait files uh, is that uh, if you um, add tr the short story, if you add a trait and uh, you don't add that new trait at the end of that file when you're writing the script, mm -hmm. uh, what can happen is that old save games will read the file wrong and, uh, and basically um move uh, all the traits that the characters have one step along in the trait list so i think it was um one of these traits that was next to the syphilis trait in the list uh, so it and it that everyone in his dynasty had or something <laughs> some, some some person posted on the forum and i think it was it could have been like born in the purple or, or one of these traits that men, many in your family will have yeah <laughs> and he loaded up his save game after the patch and everyone had syphilis and he was like what <laughs> Because you know that, that so. th that's kind of curious. Oh, I have I have potentially a I potentially have a uh, war on my hand. Or never mind. I have a, I can end this plot. So right now right. Uh, in the game there is a small problem involving rebels, I believe. Um, or has that been resolved? Uh, yeah. Well, the, there is one thing that can happen. Well, there is an event in India if you have low religion authority, which um, the Buddhism does initially. Uh, it can give you uh, some events with like temple corruption or religious unrest in the province. And uh, there was a bug there where the wrong modifier was applied by the event and you got insane revolt risk. And, and uh, uh, that was the <laughs> revolt the problem. In that the was a minor, <laughs> minor issue that yeah, is that's now being resolved. Yeah, that, that, that's been fixed and I'm not sure when that fix will be online, but uh, soon. I'm just building castle towns in every single one of my holdings. Hold on here. Because uh, I can hold nine holdings. It's ridiculous how big my domain is. I can actually hold nine, nine, nine cities in this, as you can see here. As a Jane, uh, or as a giant, I can hold nine. Uh, in this particular case, a uh, giant is plus three because their domain size is so much bigger. It's quite impressive what they can do. Yeah. S and that combines really well with another advantage they have is that uh, they have a quite a hefty bonus to vassal loyalty if you go and have a look at uh, what your vassals think of you well not not very highly apparently but uh, opinion of liege liege is jane you will have a modifier there uh, liege is jane yeah that's plus that's plus 30 that's All pretty right. impressive yeah so if you want a stable realm uh what do you want you want a large domain mm -hmm. because you can rule it directly don't need to worry about vassal loyalty and the other thing you want is you know obviously happy loyal vassals so as a jane ruler uh if you can work these advantages and uh with the uh, loyal vassals and a large domain which you can develop and, and uh, you will um i appear to have a dangerous faction all right find a leader and bribe him or kill him that's <laughs> yeah i'm just gonna try to bribe him here and see what he, fa what he does he had a, he had a, his opportunity. He he didn't particularly like me because of religious differences. Because yeah. he is in fact Hindu. All th 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 Hindus always always trying to break away. Uh, yeah, well, h Hindus have a lot of opinions related to caste and so on, which mm. the Jains and the Buddhists are a lot more chill out about. But I mean, but I'm, I'm for example, if it's Hatria. Yeah. Um, so yeah. Probably now it's just the religious differences in this case, but um, if you should like um, marry someone outside your own caste, Hindus will think uh, you've done a terrible thing, mm -hmm. and uh, even if you're not a Hindu. But um, as a Jain ruler, I would suggest you try and uh, see if you can get opinion up with some of your vassals. Ooh, I just had a daughter, Padmala Devi. That's a nice name. Mm -hmm. We'll keep that. Um, where was I? Yeah, uh, 
I'd recommend you try and uh, if you can get their opinion up and convert them to Jainism because Zarasha Kutra, let me see, I think you would have quite a lot of Jain subjects. Uh, as in, you know, the peasants, mm -hmm. the <laughs> burghers in the cities and in the provinces. Mm -hmm. So if you can get your, um, convince your vassals, your Hindu vassals, because you will have some to also convert and you can start reaping the immense benefits of this famed Jain stability. Mm -hmm.